So right after the markets closed today, Elon Musk came out and announced that they are going to do a five to one stock split with mm -hmm. Tesla. So mm -hmm. right now, Tesla was actually down at closing. They were down around 1300 and something after market uh, trading. They've gone up around uh, last time I checked, they were up like 40 some dollars back, putting them back over $1,400 a share. Right. And so on on August 31st, they are going to start trading at the adjusted price. I have no idea what's going to happen with the stock between now and then. I can only imagine that the stock price is going to probably get run up to, you know, 16, 1700 bucks. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's going to be crazy. I would not be at all surprised if tomorrow that stock hits at least 1550 tomorrow. And but when it splits, it's going to split five to one, which is going to make it much more affordable for a lot of people to get in. Mm -hmm. It's well, going to be interesting to see how this thing plays out. Let's give them some context and then we'll get back into what we think is going to happen. So first thing I want to mention to people, if you've been following this live stream since March, you heard it here first from me and Larry when other people were saying sell stocks, don't buy Tesla. You heard me say run out and buy Tesla right now. And I probably would not have felt that way if I didn't own the vehicle. When I bought the vehicle, I realized it was more than just a car. It was basically technology on wheels. So I seen the power of the yeah. innovation. And that's what preempted me to knowing that the stock had long-term gain. And I knew that while it was cheap during the dip, it was a great time for you to buy it to have long-term growth. But with this split happening, let's define it a little better for you. Here's a little news clip, and then we'll finish this video off. And there are some controversial statements made in this news clip because too many people love to hate on Tesla. Take a look. They really do. The news on Tesla that I mentioned at the top of the show announcing a five for one stock split. We are seeing the stock rise in the after hour session, a more than 7% gain at this point. Bill Abo's got the details. Bill. Hey, Melissa, this is something that a number of people have talked about possibly happening, although I heard people say three to one or four to one. No, Tesla's board has approved a five for one stock split. So here's what's going to happen. This is effective starting on August 21st. So that's when you will see it take effect. If you're a shareholder as of October 21st, that's when they'll do the calculation and uh, basically split your stock into five uh, pieces there. And then it actually starts trading on the five to one basis starting on August 31st. And as you mentioned, the stock moving higher, what? It's up 6 7% uh, after hours after this announcement came out. So uh, in the eyes of a lot of people, this is not a surprise given the fact that as the stock got up here into that $1,400, $1,500 range, a number of people I talked with said, boy, if they had this back down in that two to $300 range, you could bring even more people potentially into the stock. Uh, and that's why we're seeing the reaction that we're seeing. I guess. I mean, the math of it, obviously, it does not create any value, but that people think it creates value, so therefore it does. It's kind of ridiculous, especially since we've seen that you can do, you know, uh, partial shares now. You can do trading with little or zero cost commission. I, so I don't know. I, I mean, I get that it works, and so why not do it? The other thing is stocks that split have tended to be doing well anyway. So there is that sort of bias. And conversely, stocks that do reverse splits, haven't been doing well. I mean, sure. Yeah, may, maybe it will. <laughs> I agree with Karen. It's absurd. Like, I mean, there's nothing I, that's I, changed, I'm on board, but, too. I'm know. on board with you guys. So, I mean, I don't really get this 6% <laughs> I mean, six, six rise now, but, you know, so be it. Here we are. Come on, Mel. <laughs> so be it. But but here's the thing is that human beings like to buy a whole amount of something. We find it in the Bitcoin world. Oh, I want to buy a whole Bitcoin. I want to buy 100 shares, a full lot of Tesla, and I can't do it at $1,500. It's absolutely absurd, but human beings can be absurd. So if it works, you know, good for the company, I guess. They created value out of thin air for the time being. But investors at home should understand nothing changed with this company. Nothing whatsoever changed with the fundamentals of this company. Maybe you get some more people on Robinhood buying in. But, I, 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 you know, I, I'm not buying Tesla on this news. Let's put it that way. Sure. The, the absurdity of it <laughs> is just, but it speaks volumes as to what's going on. And. You know, this is going to, I'm going to get added for this, but I think for a lot of people, they'd rather be long uh, five shares of a $200 stock as opposed to one share of a $1,000 stock. I, I know there's, there's an yeah. absurdity to that that I can't explain, but I think that's just human nature. I think that's what's going on here. And obviously the same thing's happened with Apple. And I bet you if we ask Ken Show, I don't know if he still works for the network, but 
I think if we asked him, you know, and to go back and look throughout history of stock splits, I'm sure most of these stocks do very well on that announcement. So maybe there is something to it. Yeah, Larry, let, let, let me let me let me take this one first. OK, for those for those for of it, you man. that understand how Tesla has been under the microscope, they've been against the eight ball the whole time, not just as a stock, but as a company. And without going in and taking personal digs at the three people that was on that panel, I'm going to say that they are absurd. And here's why I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Stock investing is also psychology. Psychology mm -hmm. is also if something costs less, I'm in a better position to afford it. If right. something costs less, I'm in a better position to afford it. They are ultra conservative in their thinking. They're not thinking about today's investors. And there are a lot of people who don't even have access to um, brokerages that do fractional shares. I mean, I guess right. you could go get it if you want it bad enough, but there are a lot of brokerages that don't do it. And they also was double speaking in the midst of everything they were saying. They sat there and told you what me and Larry said a few videos ago, when stocks split, there's a run up to the day it splits and there's a run up after it splits. And they said right. that in their analysis, but then they try to make you think that it is absurd that Tesla is doing the split. There's no absurdity here, ladies and gentlemen. Elon wants a wider base of people owning the stock. Elon was actually complaining when the stock went up to $800, saying that it was overvalued. And us investors was like, Elon, shut your geeky ass up. But the stock <laughs> kept going because Elon is doing great with Tesla. He's doing great with his rocket ship. And the technology that is in his rocket ship is the same technology they're using with Tesla. So that's yeah. why the stock keeps going, because people are investing in this stock for the long run, 10 years down the road. And it's nothing absurd about a stock splitting to get the price down to 250 to $300 so that more retail investors can buy a whole share instead of a fractional share. Because a lot of people can afford two, $300 where everybody can't afford 1400 in one lump sum. I give the floor to you, Larry. Yeah, I think um, I think that some of these some of these people that are saying the things they're saying about Tesla and and I don't think they they I think they understand it. Maybe they don't like it, and so they can't fully appreciate it. But the market is different now than it has been in the past because there's a lot more retail investors involved in the market. And what that people say is, oh well. They're going to get taken. All these robber investors are going to get taken. They're going to lose their money. They're going to be all upset when it happens. There's a possibility of that happening. Anybody who enters the stock market, whether you are a retail investor or an institutional investor, there's a chance that you're going to get taken. There's a chance that you could lose your money or someone else's money if you're, if you're playing with someone else's money. But mm -hmm. the fact that we have so many more retail investors, the fact that you can go to a, 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 a brokerage like... Um, like Robinhood or Webull, and since you know, since brokerages like that force the change with things like with with TD Bank, and when I signed up with TD, I signed up because it was like, I think my it was only what eight dollars a share. I mean, eight dollars a trade or something like that, and then it dropped to five dollars a trade. Now it's zero a trade, and it's that way across the board pretty much. It's that way with all of these these sort of self service you know brokerages with you know whether it's TD. Or or Charles Schwab or or E Trade or or you know or um, what some of the, whatever some of the other ones are I can lose them blanking out on them. But as long as you don't need a broker, you know, a broker assisted trade, you're going to trade for free. Which means a lot of people say, okay, well, if I have if I have eight or ten thousand dollars sitting in a savings account or a bank account, why not just go ahead and let it and park it in my brokerage account? Maybe I make a couple hundred bucks or a couple thousand bucks or hit it big and make several thousand bucks. And then when I need the money, I'll just pull it out. And a lot of people think that way and they're using their money that way. And it's become very easy. And some people uh, are really, really good at at stock trading at options at bond trading all this stuff they have time they're at home they have time to do it and they're and they're putting their work their money to work for them and i think tesla is one of those cases where you have a lot of retail investors 
that are trading Tesla stock. Not all stocks are like that. If you look at mm -hmm. if you look at a stock like um, you know, like Amazon or Alphabet, they're so expensive that if I bet you if I pulled them up on my TD account right now, I'd probably see the percentage that's held by institutions is really high because they're the ones that can actually afford it. And there's a lot of retail people that have bought Tesla in the past. Then it got to a point where they couldn't afford it and they want to buy in. And now when it gets back down to 200 and some dollars a share, they can afford to buy back in. Now they may not be able to buy in at the same level as, as some pension fund, but if the stock price drops back down to $300, yeah, you could take 1500 bucks and go buy some shares and that, and it's not going to kill you, you know, right, but right. right now, when the stock is running at fourteen hundred bucks a share, most people can't go and spend, you know, fourteen thousand dollars to buy a lot of it. It's mm -hmm. just too much, right. you know. Right. And so, and I think that I think that in the I think that in the long run, it's going to be good for for Tesla. It's going to be good for the investors because it's going to split. It's the price will drop for a period of time. I think what we'll see is it'll drop and there'll be another run up because all of a sudden, that that those shares that are Two fifty, three hundred dollars. People are going to want them, and they're going to mm -hmm. start buying them, and it's going right. to drive the price back up. And I would not be at all surprised to see that stock split. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised to see that that the stock get ran up before it splits, and then when it splits, it actually splits at like four hundred a share, and so many people want in on it that it gets that it gets driven back up to five hundred, six hundred dollars a share in a very short period of time. Right, and. Each and every one of them that we just seen acting like they're not going to buy it. Larry, secretly, they might not buy it for the funds they manage, but their assets is going to buy it for their personal oh. portfolio. And, I mean, it ain't no question they're going to do that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, right. let me give you some evidence into what's going to happen. As you can see, that arrow is pointing to what Morningstar is saying is the fair market value of Tesla, which is 751 So in essence, right now, they're saying it's way overvalued. Now, when they split the stock and get it down to three hundred dollars or whatever it's going to be, if they're telling you the fair market is seven fifty, why would you not think that that stock ain't going to run back up to seven fifty? Probably in a month or two, if not quicker. At well, the very, to be, at to the, be at fair, the, if they're saying, it. to be fair, if they're saying the 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 fair value of that the, is seven fifty, and it's currently fifty at fifteen hundred, or it was fifteen hundred when that came out. They're saying the fair value is seven fifty. When they split it five to one, that now that that analysis would have to also be split for five, you know, five to one. So you'd have so if that thing is is saying seven fifty, you'd have to divide that seven fifty by five, and that then would be the 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 true value because there's going to be more shares available. So part of their calculation is how many shares are, are available and outstanding and what the price is and all that. So when you when you do five to one, you're going to have five times as many shares out there. Well, so, I, I still think that the market value is going to be around 750 because like they said in the video, nothing has changed with the dynamics of the company. So Morningstar is rating the company by all the metrics they use where it's at currently to get you to what they feel like is a fair value for each individual stock. And so right. I still believe that seven, 750 is still going to be the target even when they split. And it's not going to take any time for the stock to run back up to that number. I think they are tripping. I think they're upset um, that they missed Tesla the very first time. And ladies and gentlemen, me and Larry are not financial advisors. We're giving you nope. what we do, what we think is going to happen. It's up to you if this is a way you want to use a vehicle to make money, especially an electrified vehicle. Right. I, I Someone asked me, what do I think the price, how much do you think Tesla will be worth after this happens? If they're talking about like how much the company's worth or the stock price will, or trade for, I think, uh, I personally think that it's going, I think it's going to open tomorrow. <laughs> I think, I think tomorrow when the market opens, it's going to open probably in high 14s and probably almost instantly. Well, I don't know. It might open if it might open at 15 and you know, once there's pre-market trading. I think it's going to I I would not be surprised if it opens tomorrow. I'll just say I wouldn't be surprised if it opens tomorrow at 1500 plus and I wouldn't be at all surprised if it runs up to 
16, 1700 bucks tomorrow. I think it's going to have a pretty big leap. All the financial analysts and all the all the all the financial pundits are all going to say this is crazy. The company hasn't done anything different. This stock is bloated. It's way out of there. And and all of that may be true. And all of it may also just simply not matter because there's going to be a lot of people that are saying, hey, I've been wanting to get Tesla. I can't afford to get five shares. But if I go ahead and buy one share now, you know, well, on the 21st, that's when that's locked in. Whatever that price is, I believe whatever that price is on the 21st is what's going to be locked in. And then it'll be and then it'll start trading five to one. That'll be the split price there. And mm -hmm. so. You know, we'll see. It's going to be interesting. I, I mean, it's going to be fun to watch it all happen. But I honestly think that it's probably I would not at all be surprised to see this thing split at like sixteen hundred, and it's going to end up being it. It's going to end up being the adjusted price will be end up being like you know whatever that whatever that is around three something like about three twenty five or something like that three twenty. I, I personally think that it might go more than sixteen hundred. I'm I'm gonna buy maybe five to ten shares tomorrow. The minute the minute the market open, I'm gonna buy some. I think it might end up seven north of seventeen on this big news. And then when it does split, it's gonna probably take two, three, four more weeks of a run up. So yeah, if you're into short term profits as well as long term gains. This is definitely the place you should come and get stocks if you can afford it right now before the split because you'll take money all the way up to the split. Then when they do split, you'll take money from those who couldn't afford the $1,000 plus price as they're buying into the stock at a lower price. Yeah, I I mean, I, I wanted to get it on Tesla a while back. I didn't because it was too expensive. I have it now because it's too expensive. But I honestly, part of me is thinking like I might just go ahead and bite the bullet and buy buy two or three shares. I mean, you should, you know, you I mean, should. if I buy three shares and it splits five to one, that gives me fifteen. And mm -hmm. you know, I may be able to. I mean, just sitting on the stock for you know for a couple of weeks, that maybe it might run up enough that I can sell off enough to cover my initial investment. Absolutely, and, and, and still Absolutely. have shares. So I mean, maybe I have to. Let's say it runs up, and I have to share off, five, sell off five shares. I might be able to sell off five shares and cover my my initial investment. And I still have ten shares to hold on to. You exactly. know, exactly. And maybe and, I have to share ten. Maybe I have to sell ten shares to to, to cover it, and then I still have five you, shares left. I don't know, but I mean, it's. I'm I'm seriously thinking about transferring some money over to my account. Today, you should, so you should, so I can buy first thing in the morning and see what happens with it. You should be ready. Um, and for those of you that don't believe in it, I sold half my position three weeks ago when it hit um $900. And now, you know, I was kicking myself because it wound up going up to 15, but I was fine because I had already 17 at one point. Yeah, I had already made so much money because I bought the stocks for 450. So I was cool right. and I bought some Google and some Amazon, some other things. But even with me selling half my position, I'm still up over $7,000 in profit from what I got with selling half my position. I'm still up. So I'm right. going to buy some more tomorrow with the intent to sell some of those positions when they split, maybe after a week or two of it riding and just take back some of the investment I'm putting in tomorrow. That's my plan.